Hi, welcome back to the channel. Uh, we have a video series with Shopify and creating our first API app. Um, if you didn't watch our other video of how to obtain your API key, I suggest uh, clicking the video in the description to watch that video first because this is a multi-video series and you're gonna need your API key first before you even begin in this next part. So let's say you wanna get products from your Shopify store. Well, you got to connect to their API to pull those products in and then maybe save them into your own SQL database. So today I'm going to show you how to uh, pull in your products. They have a limit of 250 items you can pull at one time. So I'm going to show you also how to get around that. And we're going to pull in those products into our own SQL server. So then we can later manipulate that data, um, use it for different purposes. So let's get started. All right. So the first thing you want to do is create two PHP files. Uh, we're going to be doing this in PHP. Uh, that's the language I prefer because I'm knowledgeable in that. And we're going to connect using curl into Shopify's API. So we're going to create a file called config. So go ahead and create that config file. Uh, all of this will be in the description of the YouTube video. So if you need to download this, that's where it's going to be. Of course, my information is going to be different from yours. So you're going to need to modify some of these files. So you can see we have variable here called con underscore db. And that's going to make our database connection to our MySQL server. So you're going to need that. You're going to need a SQL server. You're going to need to connect to it, either a uh, local, um, usually the, uh, this could be local host instead of an IP address. Uh, if your MySQL server is local to your uh, web host server. So you're going to make that connection, create a table uh, and a database for that. And then uh, your access token that we did in the earlier video, you're going to need to paste that access token here, create a variable here. And then our shop URL, this is very important because this is how our curl is going to connect to Shopify's API using that access token. So we need to put in that URL that's going to be different from everybody, right? Because that's going to be your unique store URL. So remember that as you put that in there. And then a little variable that just pulls in the date and the timestamp. So we know when we imported that product, we want to timestamp it. Now you can do that by SQL in, but I just figured it's easy to do it here as well. So... Um, it's your uh, personal preference. So our second file we're going to need to create is a, um, you can name it whatever you want. I just did get underscore product uh, underscore demo dot PHP. Now this is where we're going to modify some code to connect to Shopify's API. And we're going to pull in things like customer data. We're going to pull in product data, things like that. So let's go ahead and modify that file. I already have it open here. And you can see we have a couple um, lines of code already. Because uh, like I said, we already, I don't want this to be too long of a video. I just want to show you how you can easily connect to Shopify's API, pull in the data you need, and then insert into a SQL database. Maybe just to display it on your web page, however you want it done. Um, so like I said, this is all going to be in the YouTube description if you need to copy and paste this code. But we're basically doing a curl request to Shopify's API. And then uh, you can see we're getting our response. Now it's very important to... This curl option here, the header, you need to set that for true because if you want to do more than 250, which you can see that's the limit. If you change this to 350, it doesn't mean you're going to get your 350 products depending on how many products you have. So I'll show you in a minute how we can get around that. And then uh, just save this. And then we're going to go to that web page and see um, what that's going to look like. So if we go ahead and hit refresh, just to make sure it does work. Yep. So you can see it's pulling in. Uh, we have a couple different products here. So if we go back to the Shopify store and you're going to see our products, we generated like three or four products. This is an example. There we go. And we're going to click on a product. And then this is the ID of the product. Uh, so we're going to go back here and do control find. You can see that product is coming in. You can see the title comes in test product one. Go back here. Yep. Test product one. So that's that product. Um, and you can get all the other information about it when it was published, uh, the vendor, if we set a vendor, when it was created, it tells you all that information. It tells you a lot of details. Um, if there's an image, it'll actually pull in the uh, image. So you can see that down here. Uh, this is, I think, for the last product, but it doesn't matter. I just want to show you what it looks like so you can see it. So what, what this means is you can pull in not only the product price, uh, the ID, um the quantity the images from it the description you can pull in all that information into your database so you can manipulate it later uh, so this is good to, good information to be able to pull it from so you're like well, this is great information you're pulling in all these products now how do i actually use this and get into the sql uh into my sql database so i'm going to show you that right now 
So we're gonna space some lines down here. Like I said, I already had a lot of this pre-programmed because to save time, right? Uh, you don't want me to have to hand type this all out. It'll take forever to be a long video then too. Um, but basically what we're doing here is we're doing a for each. So every time we get a product, it's gonna go through and put the product, um, it's gonna get the product ID into a variable. So we're gonna get all this information that we just showed you on the screen here, because this doesn't look pretty, right? It's, it's a bunch of text that's all jumbled together, right? Because you're just uh, printing out the response we're getting from the curl. So we want to put everything in variables, right? So then we can use that to then maybe enter it into our database or display it better. Um, so we're going to do that right now. So that's what this statement is basically saying. Uh, it's doing a for each. So every time a, it gets a product, it's going to do this for each product. You can see we're doing a for each statement here. And as we want to show you, you might want to code it um, like this just because let's say a product doesn't have an image. Well, I'm going to show you here in a minute what this is going to do. So we go ahead and refresh this page. You can see, uh, well, you just added all this code. Where, where is that? Well, I forgot to comment that out because that's basically printing out the response and then I did an exit. So of course that's going to end the code there. So if I could just comment that out, refresh, now it's going to show you each ID, but look, we're getting an error. Um, and that's because this particular product doesn't have an image to it. So if we go to our store and go to products, you can see we have one product that doesn't have an image. So we need to account for those kind of things, right? Especially if it doesn't have a title or if it doesn't have anything particular, we need to account for those things in programming as best practice, right? So if we go back here, we comment, uncomment that and just remove this line because we want to account for, if there's no image, then just blank out the variable. That's basically what that's telling you. Um, so if we save this now, go back here and uh, refresh, that error code should go away and we just have our IDs of our products. But then you're like, well, what happened to all the other information? We want to have everything, right? We, you can. It's just, I just only echoed out the ID. So if I go here and echo out the title, now the title will be displayed, right? So if I refresh, it's going to just echo the titles of each product. So you see what I'm getting at here. You're pulling in all the information, put it into variables, and then now we can use that information to then insert into our database. So now, once we got to this point, let's go ahead and insert it into the database. Let's have some fun here. All right, so before we start inserting things into the database, well, we need to create a table with some fields, don't we? So let's go back here. We're gonna go ahead and create our table. I like using uh, this uh, SQL application because it's very easy to use. We're gonna do a new query. Let me maximize this. Gonna clear that out, paste in that, and hit run. Now it ran, so we're gonna hit refresh here to see our new uh, table. There we go, Shopify products. So let's go and double click on that and go to our table. So you can see that just created this table for us with all of our fields and everything that we're gonna need. So that's perfect, so that's done. So now we are ready to do some inserting. So let's go and minimize this. Go back here, and you can see I've already written that code to insert, so we're gonna paste that down here. So I wanna show you, I, I did some checks in place, right? Because I think you would run this as a cron job. So in order to do that, you wanna make sure you don't insert the same product multiple times, correct? So what you wanna do is since the product ID is very unique to that product, what we wanna do is first check to see if it's in the database, right? So that's what this uh, statement here is doing. It's basically going to that Shopify products table it's going to go to products IDs and it's going to post this product ID. And before it insert, it's going to say, hey, are you in the database or not? And if you are, then just don't do anything. But if you are in the if you aren't in the database, which will be zero, because you were kind of the number of rows, uh, then go ahead and insert into the database. Now, what you could do further on at this point, you could do an else and you can make another function here to so if it is in the database let's say maybe the prices get changed or maybe say the description gets changed or the quantity then you could write an update statement here to then update the product instead of inserting it into the database again so you can do that here if you want to but in this instance we're not doing that so what we're going to do is we're just going to do echo um and uh, already in db so that so when we run this um, I'll know when it's in the database because we'll refresh the page a couple of times and if it gets to this point, then we know it's in the database and we're, and we're good to go. All right, so uh, oh, I forgot to add a line break here because um, if we don't add a line break, because this is gonna be running it multiple times because you're gonna have multiple products, right? You wanna make sure you do a line break there so you know that's there. We can also do um, 
another echo statement here that basically just says, um, we can actually pull in the product ID too. And we can put new product added, right? So then that'll tell us, hey, uh, it inserted that new product, right? So we're going to save. Now we go back to our web page here and just refresh. Ooh, hey, there you we go. It added three new products. And after we refresh again, it shouldn't add those products again to the database because we have that check in place, right? So if we refresh, it should say already in database. So let's see what happens. Hey, look at that, our check is working. So now let's go back to our database here and let's go and refresh to see if we have those three new products. Hey, great job, all right, yeah, we're there. All right, so you can see it brought in the product ID, inventory ID, um, this, the SKU, I guess didn't get inserted, but let's see why on that, because that should be running in there. Oh, you know why? because we don't have it in Shopify. So if we go to Shopify, go here, let's go into this product here. And yep, there's no SKU set. So let's just set one, two, three, four, right? Now see, this is a perfect example. If instead of it echoing out already in database, we can have an update statement that's basically updating that product. Let me show you how to do that here. All right, so we're gonna add um, product updated. And we'll put in that product ID. Like I said, you don't have to echo out uh, this stuff. I just liked it because um, it's letting me know, you know, what what it's updating and things like that. So now let's go ahead and run our update product, and we're gonna do SQL update record. Sorry, it's kind of hard to see because I got my mic right in front of my keyboard. That doesn't really work out so well. And then we're gonna do update Shopify set. And then we wanna do, let's say that product SKU, right? So we wanna do product. And I wanna say it's underscore uh, SKU. Yeah, fix that. Then we want to do equals. We want to do that product SKU value, which is right here. Another important thing I didn't mention was uh, you can see we're doing a sanitization because that's very important, right? Just in case if it's passing something that it, the insert can't handle, we want to make sure we sanitize everything. So when we insert into something in the database, it's safe to do that um, because we want to escape anything because then it'll break the code and then you know bad things will happen. <laughs> All right, so. And we also want to tell it, okay, well, where we want to update it, right? We got to tell it where to update. So we're going to do where, and we're going to do product um, ID. Next the capital that P when I do that. So product ID equals, and we're going to grab that from that variable that we brought in, right? So that's why it's very helpful to put everything in variables. So now what we're doing is, we also need to have it execute here. There we go. All right, so what we're doing here is now, instead of just saying, hey, this product's already created, don't insert it again. Now we're gonna actually update the product. So if something changes on the product, it'll update it into our database. Because you wanna make sure, you know, if you change the price for a product, if you change the description, you don't wanna make sure that information gets updated into your database, right? So that's why we're doing all that. Hit save. So now if we go back here and hit refresh, you can see now it shows this product updated. So if we go back to our database, we should see a product SKU for that one product because we only changed it for that one product. So we go here and we hit refresh. Hey, there it is, one, two, three, four. Now, of course, this is only updating the product SKU if that changes, but you can also do this for um, you know, the inventory ID, which that actually shouldn't change, but the product weight, the product title, the product quantity, things like that. So let's go ahead and do it for another one. So let's actually do the product price. So we're gonna take that there, do a comma, put in product price equals, and we wanna do the product price variable, which is right here. And there you go. So now it'll also update the product price. So let's hit save. Let's go back here. Let's say we modify the price of this apple to $1.50 and hit save. 
I think right now it's just zero. Yep, so you can see zeros in the database. We refresh it, you can see it's zero. Go back here, refresh. Should I update those products? Go back here, refresh. Boom, $1.50. So now it's updating the product price as well as the product SKU. And you can keep doing this for your weight, for your title, the description. And I don't know if you've noticed, if you go to the um, product description here, let's go ahead and add that because we don't have any product description for um, these products. So we'll just do test product and hit save. And you know what? We got to do it for product description now because if I want to show you how to do this, we got to add it to where it updates it into the code. So product HTML is what I call it. And we're going to do a comma, product HTML equals, and then we're going to find our variable for that. And you're probably wondering, well, how come all these variables are sanitized, but then for the HTML body, you're doing base 64 encoded? Because I'm what I'm doing is encoding all that HTML because it's an HTML body and you want to display it properly, right? So I figured base 64 encoding, encoding all that, into the database is better to display it than later on instead of trying to escape it all. So that's the way I do it. Other programmers don't agree with that, but that's just the way I do it. You can always change it. This is just an example to get you started in your custom uh, API app if you want to build a web app out of your Shopify store. All right, we hit save on that. So it's, now it's also going to update the product body. So let's go back. Like I said, you can keep doing this for all your variables that you want to update. Refresh. Go back here. Now we should see something in the product HTML. And you're like, well, how do I display that? It's all like encoded, right? Well, when you want to display this, you do something that's called base64 decode, which is right here. I'll show you that. So you would do, instead of encode, you would do decode right there. So then, then, then you would put the variable in that. And you know, and then then you could echo that out, right? So it decodes that encoded uh, text. One thing that I wanted to show you was when I told you if you had over 250 products, it stops at that point. So if you want to keep going and going through all those products, we're going to add some lines of code to fix that right now. Let me show you that, and then we'll end this thing. All right, so we're going to add some lines of code here. Like I said, this was all in the description of the video. Um, I did this ahead of time because trying to program all this at once in one video, it just makes it that much longer, right? So we're gonna go ahead and add in all that. Let's clean up some of these lines so it looks a little bit prettier. <laughs> um, all right, so basically what we're doing here is we're getting, every time you do a curl API response, you get headers coming back, right? And that gives you kind of a unique ID, like a page info. Um, and what we wanna do is grab that information from the header so then we can submit it again to Shopify's API it's basically you're viewing the first 250 products. Hey, we already viewed those. Give me the next 250. So that's basically what this is doing here. So you can see do the shop URL, the amount of products, and you can see next page info. So basically it's going to go over and each page is going to do this whole thing over again for each product. So we're going to save and that should fix that problem because I know a lot of people in the community have that problem where they say, hey, it's only giving me the first 250 products. How do I get the next 250? So that's how you do it. Well, I know I didn't go into detail on a lot with programming you guys, but I wanted to make this video as short as possible so you guys can get up and going. But all this code will be in the description of the video. I hope this helps you with your Shopify journey on creating a custom application for your Shopify store. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.